No man who has taken time to holistically give himself to the word of God has not proved it that it works. The word of God cannot fail because this is the absoluteness of his power. An open invitation to a life in the word. Because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith. Grace and peace are multiplied. That is why we lay hands on the lame and they walk. We lay hands on the blind and they see. We lay hands on the deaf and they hear. It's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application. Arise on the wings of revelation. Align your destiny. Transform your world. This is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace Lubega. Father, we want to give you praise and thank you this afternoon. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your love. Thank you for bringing us together here as a family of heaven. We give you praise for keeping us. We give you praise for building us. We give you praise for what you're just about to do in our midst. Lord, we thank you for your power and your grace. We give you praise, Lord, that you're taking us from glory to glory by your spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout amen. I would please like you to say hello to at least five people. At least look for someone and greet them. This is a family of heaven. And then I would like you to give a mighty hand clap to the choir for being such a great blessing. Hallelujah. You are very welcome to today's service. How has been your week? Huh? Awesome. Wonderful. Great. That's all good. Amen. Let's give God praise for today's service. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, today, as you can see, our father is not here. He is in South Africa changing the world. Praise the Lord. Uh, it is such a privilege and an honor to belong to such a man, to belong to such a gene, to belong to such a seed. Amen. And uh, as you can see, the Lord has entrusted me with the responsibility of representing him today. And I would like to thank him so much for having raised me to a place where I'm qualified for God's responsibility. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, the pastors are in the house. And our mother is in the house. <laughs> Mommy, oh, that is love for you. We love you so much. Yes. I would like to remind us of my great price. As we all know, my great price is coming up on the 17th of June, and uh, the world is yet to see a women's conference it has never seen before. Women! Praise the Lord. And uh, part of our responsibility as our service unto God is to mobilize. Praise the Lord. If you're weak, 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 you can at least bring 10 women. I mean, but if you yeah, bring as many as you can, say amen. It's not about the numbers. It's about the people we want to receive the word. Never forget that. As we are mobilizing the spirit, is not so that we feel a stadium. No, 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 no. The spirit is, if this message can get to as many people as possible, the world would be transformed. Gamba, Amina. So you're going to do that? Yes, and I, I hope you know the order of how we submit our names and so on and so forth, but please make sure you are part of this conference in a contributing way, not in only a taking way. Say, Amen. 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 So, can we get into the word? Amina. Oh, we welcome our online audience and our TV audience. Please clap for them. 
Thank you for joining us. Uh, our live streaming centers all over the country, around the world, we welcome you too. May God bless you so much for being in today's service. Amen. So, can we go? So, uh, I think I should start like this. Uh, I've been a minister for some good time. Amen. Uh, the only advantage we have is that we started young. So, <laughs> We are young, but we are old in the gospel. Say amen. And uh, we started with so many people. We, we, we were very many young people who were radical for God. And uh, a lot of things went on. And uh, over the years, I started to check my life to see the things that made a very contributing factor to the consistent life in the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ in my life. Amen. And there is that thing that Apostle taught many years ago, many, many years ago. It was about keeping yourself. He taught it. It hit me so hard. And it has kept me for so many years. I mean, I can tell you the fire on my life is increasing every day. I can tell you that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And uh, I have seen the demonstrations of the Spirit. Everything on my life has been increasing every other day. I mean, and uh, I started to think to myself that these are probably some of the things that some of our brothers and sisters who never kept the fire, never gave emphasis, because if it became a secret to me, then it may be that important. Amen. So today I thought of speaking to us about one of those thoughts he started in me long ago. Hallelujah. And uh, I hope it stirs something in your soul. And you to join the chariot. Amen. So can we get into the word of God in the book of First John chapter 5, verse 18? First John chapter 5, verse 18. Look at that. The Bible says, We know that whosoever is born of God, somebody, come on, eh? Say something like, eh, eh. because this is you. Do you know that? This is you. The Bible says, We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and the wicked one touches him not. Papa read this verse to us many years ago and surely have never been touched by the wicked one. It doesn't mean he doesn't try. It doesn't mean he doesn't dare. But I'm far from the reach of the devil for him to have any consequence on my life. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. And I thought I should talk about something like that. I should start the thoughts he started in me long ago and then we get going. Is that okay? So can we go? Right. So, the man of God here in John is trying to say that it's your responsibility to keep yourself. He says, if you keep yourself, the wicked one will not touch you. Oh, I dreamt when something is strangling me. I dreamt when my aunt is doing this. I dreamt when this is coming to me. He says, if you know how to keep yourself, the wicked one will not touch you. Somebody shout hallelujah. And now to lay some emphasis here, there are very many Greek words for the word keep. And one of, the, one of them is custodia. So custodia, where you get your word custodian. And custodia is, for example, the word used when the Bible speaks of how the guards were put at the grave of Jesus Christ, at the sepulcher of Jesus Christ, to keep it. That word keep is custodia. Now that keeping is, you are keeping something so that it is not stolen. Are you getting me? Now, that's not the keeping we are talking about. So, there is another keeping, like of prison, where you keep something so that it does not escape. The Greek word, I think, is plus or something like that. So, where it shouldn't escape. Like some of you, you remember in your schools, uh, primary and high school, I think you had Ascaris who used to guard that. So, that word, keep there, they keep that. 
the school so that kids don't escape. You understand? That's also not the word. The word used here, the Greek word I think is terio. Terio is the wisdom to preserve. In other words, he that is born of God preserves themselves and the wicked one touches him not, keeps themselves from corruption. In other words, God is trying to say, because you're born of him, you have the power in you to keep yourself from corruption, to keep yourself from, from being killed, to keep your, you have the power to keep yourself. Somebody say, I have the power to keep myself. So you can keep yourself from disease. Uh, 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 as disease is happening, disease is spreading everywhere, uh, COVID, what, name it, you can keep yourself. You can keep yourself from accidents. You can keep yourself from financial troubles. You can, you can keep yourself because you're born of God. And there is a way you keep yourself. Now, the keeping here also has a, a, a mind of maintaining yourself in a sober state. And you should know that it's your responsibility to do that. And if you don't do it, there is too much that devil can take advantage of. If you're old, you know what I'm talking about. That devil doesn't joke when it comes to dealing with the sons of men. Praise the Lord. But then I also want us to see another angle of this instruction in the book of Peter. Look at this in Peter. In Peter he says, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 1, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. He says, elect according to the full knowledge of God the Father, this thing is too deep, but we don't have time. Anyway, through the sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Let's go. Blessed be the Father, the, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That's powerful. When Jesus rose from the dead, you were begotten again. Somebody say, I'm born again. Come on, say it. I'm born again. And the Bible says, you are born again to a lasting hope. It is lively. But that's not the point. To an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Who are kept. Somebody say, kept. By the power of God. But he says through faith and to salvation. Ready to be revealed in the last time. So the Bible says that you are kept by the power of God. But how is that power of God appropriated? By your faith. Somebody say amen. So there is power available to keep you. But that power is accessed is activated by your faith. So if you are going to keep yourself for the wicked one to never touch you, you must have the wisdom, the understanding of how faith works, of how faith operates. Somebody shout amen. And many tenets of faith are taught and they are all powerful and very important. But I think also that if we are to teach certain things, certain things have to be foundational. They have to be core. For example, it is very, very important for you to understand that if I'm to operate in faith, I must firstly understand that I am a spirit being. As a born-again believer, you are a spirit being. Somebody say amen. Because you are born of God, the Bible says in John, he came unto his own and his own received him not, but as many as have received him, to them gave he the power to become the children of God. So because you are a child of God and God is spirit, therefore... You are spirit. Somebody say amen. So you are born of God. And because you are born of God, you are a spirit being. So there is an aspect of the spirit on you, but you have a soul and the body is your earthly dwelling, your earthly house. You see what I'm talking about? So man is spirit. He possesses a soul and lives in a body. This is why the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.23 that and the very God of peace sanctify you holy, and I pray your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see that? So you are spirit, you have a soul, you live in a body. Why is that very important? Listen, child of God, listen, you cannot teach deliverance, you cannot teach healing, you cannot, you cannot 
There are core truths in God you cannot teach in the church if this thing is not rectified, if this thing is not corrected. When you hear the false teachings that are taught in the body of Christ today, you realize their problem is they never understood this aspect here. So, let me not even go there. Let me stick to this. Shout Amen. amen. So, you are spirit. You live in a body. You have a body. I want to submit this to you. That your body is what you use to interact with the physical world. It is what you need to interact, to relate with the physical world. Without a body, you cannot relate with the physical world. That's why even when God wanted to come, he had to come in the likeness of sinful flesh. He needed a body too. You hear what I'm saying? So your body is what you use to interact with the sin world, with the physical world. That's why you, you relate with what you see, what you touch, what you smell, and so on and so forth. Through your senses, you interact. Now, that's your body. I should say this emphatically, that there is nothing you experience in your body when it has its source in the body. The people who struggle with addictions get it wrong. Your body has no problem. Your body is neither intrinsically evil or intrinsically good. It has no problem. It is a used vessel. Are you getting me? Anything you do in your body has its root elsewhere, not from the body. Are you hearing me? So, you, 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 so when Jesus was talking about Hey, now you take it deeper when you're reading your Bible. When Jesus was talking about your hand offending you and you cutting it off, he was not talking about this hand. Because this hand is under the dictate, is under the instruction of something else. You see what I'm talking about? Many people think, Mokama, uh, take this body away. Kill this body away. The, the body has no problem. It has no problem. For it, it is subject to to whoever is able to use it. Now, let me say it like this. The body manifests the fullness of the soul. That's very important. Whatever happens in your body is because it is what has filled your soul. You see, in my body, in my mouth, I'm talking to you. What I'm talking to you is not coming from my mouth. What I'm talking to you is coming from my spirit. From my spirit into my soul, then to, to, through my body to you. But it's not coming from my body. You see what I'm talking about? This is why people do things and they ask themselves, I wonder what was on me when I was doing that. They beat someone they didn't intend to beat. They abuse someone they didn't attend, intend to abuse. They, they run when they didn't intend to run because something is in charge of this body. That is very key for you to understand. So it means if you are to change anything in the body, if you are to change any testimony in your physical life, you can't fight physically. This is why he says that though we are in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. Do you remember that? In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, he says for... No, 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 verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, he's talking about the body, physical body, though we walk in the body, you're getting me? He says we do not walk after the flesh. We do not fight after the body. Nothing attacks you in your body. Nothing attacks you physically. There is nothing you need physically whose answer is in the physical world. Do you see that? But you see, you need a perfect life physically. Praise the Lord. What is the soul? The soul is a neutral ground. The soul can receive information from either side. It can receive information from either your spirit or your outside world through your senses. You hear me? Can you hear me? It's a neutral ground. But whatever fuels the soul manifests in the body. Don't forget that, please. So, in the soul, we find the mind. What's the mind? What you think is in your mind. The will, what you desire, 
is in your soul. Praise the Lord. The emotions, how you feel or what you feel, the personality, how you behave. You see what I mean? If we want to change you, religion is wrong to say, uh, uh, like in the Sharia, that when you steal, they should cut off your hand. You can even steal without taking anything. That's why Jesus said that if you look at a woman lustfully, you have already what? Committed adultery with her. You know what I'm talking about? Where is that execution happening? In the soul. You're getting me? So that whatever we see happening in the body already took place in your soul. The soul has just manifested what's happening in the body. I feel like that's very important to understand. So, these people, I'm struggling with this, I'm struggling with that, I've struggled with this for years, this has been my struggle for these years. You are fighting from a wrong place. You see? You cannot keep yourself until you learn the art of possessing your soul with the right possessor. Say amen. I said say amen. And for you to understand this, Remember, Jesus is teaching in Mark chapter 7, I think, and he's talking about how there is nothing entering a man can defile them. You remember that story? And then he keeps on talking and talking and talking. And then he says something very interesting in verse 21. Look at this. He says, For from within, out of the heart of men, now that word heart there is soul. You're getting me? Proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders. Now, all these things we are seeing here are done physically. But Jesus is saying, no, 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 no. They come from the heart. They come from the soul. The body just follows. You hear me? The body just follows. Praise the Lord. So, the soul has your will, that's your desires, your emotion, that's your feelings. It has your personality, that, those are your behaviors. You're getting me. It has your thoughts, that's your mind. Amen. And whatever fuels your will, your mind, your emotions, and your personality will manifest in your body. Will manifest in your physical life. Somebody shout amen. amen. This means you can't fix the issue of poverty by waking up very early to work, which is very important. Wake up very early to work for a discipline, for a pattern of discipline. You're getting me? But not for, you know what I'm talking about? This is why the man of God of recent said that Many people who are prayed for and receive their healing through prayer never keep it. This is why we have many sick people who you're dying every day and they are checking your body and there is nothing in your body. They see everything in your body is okay, but you're dying every day. Why? A rotten soul by all means has to cause the body to rot. Are you getting me? I said, are you getting me? Your relationships can't heal if they don't heal from here. You know what I'm talking about? Think about, think about, think about a relationship. You know what I'm talking about? If you don't know how to touch somebody's soul, you can't have them. You know what I mean? Praise the Lord. You can't. So, are we going? So, we have the spirit, which is born of God. Are you getting me? Who is the real you? Say amen. amen. So, he's born of God. And because he's born of God, he has the nature of God. The character of God. The life of God. The Bible says that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. And he says, and all things are of God. So, you, the real you, the spirit you, has all things of God. 
shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. Has all things of God. You're not sick in your spirit. You're not weak in your spirit. You're not disadvantaged in your spirit. You're not fearful in your spirit. You're not timid in your spirit. You're not confused in your spirit. Somebody shout amen. amen. Because your spirit is born of God. It has the nature of God. And that's the real you. Shout hallelujah. But because you have to contact this physical world, you live in a physical body. You see? You live in a physical body. And the soul is the neutral ground to always transact for you what will manifest in your physical body. I'm going so slow so that we all understand. Praise the Lord. So, are we together at that point? Now, we are talking about keeping yourself. You remember? Do you remember? He said we keep ourselves through our faith. Our faith helps us appropriate the power of God. Why I took off that time was to firstly give you the concept, then show you the application. Now, the Bible says that faith is the substance of the things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The Amplified says, now faith is the assurance. Somebody say, uh-huh. The confirmation, the title deed. Let's hold it right there. Faith is the, the assurance. Faith is... When I say I have faith, I mean what I'm talking about by faith is done. I mean what I'm talking about by faith is finished. I mean, I, I, I'm not trying to get it. I'm not receiving it. Hope receives it. Hope, it's in the future. God will do it for me. I hope I get that job. It's in the future. I hope I get married. It's in the future. I hope this happens for me. I hope God does this for me. I hope I get children. I hope my ministry flourishes. Everything is in the future when it comes to hope. And many people don't understand that while they claim to have had faith, they were actually having hope. And it's not bad to have hope. But hope is not the realm of manifestation. When you're talking about something manifesting in your life, you're not talking about hope. Hope is good. It's important to have hope. Very, very important. But when we are talking about the realm of manifestation, we're not talking about hope anymore. We are talking about faith. Now, he says with faith, you have confirmed. You are assured. Somebody shout amen. In other words, if you have faith that that job is yours, there is no way you can come back and tell us they didn't call me. You said that job is yours. You, you, if you say, I, I believe I will get that job, it will be mine. Yes, you can come back and say it didn't work. There we understand. Why we always say that faith always works, it's not because faith always works. Faith already worked. You can say, I'm believing God to get married. We understand. You're saying, I'm not married. One day I will be married. I understand. If you say, I have faith for my marriage, you mean to say, I got married long ago. I have the assurance of my marriage. I have the confirmation of my marriage. I have the title deed of my marriage. Because when you have a title deed for a plot of land, you're not about to get the plot of land. Are you? Talk to me. You already have the land. Not so. But because you can't carry it around, you walk with the proof that I have the land. So he says, faith carries a proof that the thing you hope for is already done. So, 
faith is not taking it. So, if the man of God stands on the pulpit and he says, this week is great for you, and you say, I receive it, you don't have faith for it. You have believed for it. You're getting me? Let me give you a testimony. During COVID, my parents got COVID. So when they got COVID, you know, it's wisdom to always tell the circumstances under your charge and the circumstances above your charge. That's a whole other teaching. You're getting me? There are things I don't take to Mzei. There are things I fix, like I just fix. You're getting me? And then there are things by discernment I realize this needs an authority higher. Somebody shout amen. amen. So, I went to him and told him, hey, these, your people have COVID. So, he was at his phone. So, it was like this. And then he said, I'll say it the way he said it, so I'll interpret for you. He said, Now, for the years I've known him, I knew that seat. He said, we shall not lose them, we shall not bury them. I knew Chiwet. So there was no way I could pray for their healing. Stop on in there, stop on in there. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, this, what I'm going to say is more important. Maybe you will shout later. First, wait. There was no way I could send another man of God a message. Mbaina, Mbaina. Some of you are like this. My parent is sick. 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 My parent. Everybody is giving a word. Who knows what I'm talking about? The man said, "We shall not lose them." She went there. Praise the Lord. I'm saying that for our people not to understand. So you wake up at night and go to the compound and start dancing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Things became complicated. I kept saying, the man said, Tetuja Bazika. At a particular point, the doctor told me, we are wasting your money. This woman is just being sustained by oxygen. She can't breathe anymore. We are just wasting your money. I told him, say, it's my money. Not your money. And they are alive today. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Amen. When he gave the word, the word gave me the confirmation of their perfect health. So there was no way I could tell another person, to save, to save, to save, to new Who knows what I'm talking about? But some Christians be like, <laughs> they say this, then they say it's well. They go to another one. They say, it. please speak a word. Me, I don't need many words. If Papa says it, it's done. Oh, you're getting me. I can give you story upon story upon story. One time I was going through something. So as I was explaining to him, he said, I know don't waste your time. You're a man of God. It's well. <laughs> Again, you go and wake up at night. You make sure that the way you dance is disturbing and unsettling to whoever is observing. <laughs> so you even repeat it. You can even create a song. Papa said, it is well. Papa said, it is well. Uh, 
mwami, what were you doing? I was praying. <laughs> praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Because when the word came, I received the confirmation. I, so let me give an example. So, the man of God can say something like, Mwe, don't waste my time, they are going to marry you off. If you're serious, If you're not serious, you say, I receive it, I take it. Father, in the name of Jesus, I take it, even though my auntie said, I take it. Even though I take it, I take it, I take it, Lord, I take it. There, you're not serious. You're getting me? You change everything. Because, Papa said. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Me, that's how I fight. I've never been defeated, I promise you. I've never been defeated. The devil knows it. I've never been, and I'm saying the truth. Praise the Lord. But it, you, you know what I'm talking about? Because you have to get to the devil. You have to offend him a certain way. Are, are you getting me? Why are you offending the devil? Because you have the confirmation. Praise the Lord. You have the confirmation. Now, listen to this. When you have the confirmation, God is not going to do it. He has already done it. See what goodie? Let's go. So, he says, of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Somebody shout amen. I love this one. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Faith perceiving why I dance is because Chawe did. So my prayer, listen, the honest heartfelt prayer of a righteous man is a prayer of faith. Why it is continued is because there is no problem in continuing to say what was finished. Do, do, do you understand? There is no pr problem in continuing to say what was finished. Are we getting this? So, the Bible says, faith perceives as real fact the thing that is not revealed to the senses. It means it is real but the senses have no access to it yet. It is real, but the senses don't see it yet. It does not mean that it isn't real. It does not mean it's not working. It does not mean that we should add more prayer. It does not, let me tell you, me, no matter how worse it gets, if the word came, the word is enough. If I feel like I need to pray, I just uh, uh, take the dance deeper. Over you're getting me? I take some of you because you know sometimes the last uh, the, the last kicks of a dying horse are what stronger David said I saw the devil spread himself like a green bed tree do you know what that means he spread himself like a green bed tree a green bed tree is a tree that is so strongly established in the ground and then he said and one day I looked for him and he was no more I searched him and he had passed. Are you getting me? So no matter how he spreads, the word has come. And when the word comes, that's my testimony. I mean, now, are we following? Are we following? If you say yes, we continue. Are we following? So, I don't cry about it because the testimony is already received. The confirmation is already there. Somebody shout amen. Even when I'm sowing my seed, my seed, I go sowing rejoicingly. Now, it's not a seed of, it's not, you know, a seed of faith ought to be a seed released because you have believed that what was promised is done. When we are talking about faith, we are not talking about promises. We are talking about the fulfilled promises. Somebody shout amen. That is the difference between faith and believing. 
If you are believing to get a job, you don't have that job yet. If you have faith that the job is yours, you're not trying to get it, it's yours. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout amen. Now, where do you get the confidence to say it is already done when we are still in the process? So I said, man is spirit. Are you seeing here? He has a soul, lives in the body. So somebody say, spirit. Hey, you got to lift your hand like me. Spirit, soul, body. One more time. Now, the body is what you see, the world of senses. Are you getting me? He says faith is not there. Because he says faith perceives as real fact the things that are not revealed to the senses. He says, I don't see it, but it's real. So where is it? It's in my spirit. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. What must I do for what is in my spirit to manifest in my body? The soul, whatever the soul is filled with, you don't have to pray. It automatically manifests in the body. So what I have to do, I just have to transact from my spirit into my soul. How do I transact? Papa said on Thursday, you speak and 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 speak. After you're done speaking, you speak and speak and speak and speak. When you're done speaking, you start speaking. Somebody shout amen. Let me tell you what happens as you're talking. Something is being downloaded from your spirit into your mind. Something is being downloaded from your spirit into your emotions. Something is being downloaded from your spirit into your choices, into your will, into your desires. Somebody shout amen. Before you know it, something is manifesting in the body. Because the soul, all it has to do is to be full. Whatever it is full of has to manifest in the body. That's how it works. So, if you're sick in the body, it's because your soul is sick. If you're poor in the body, it means your soul is poor. If you're struggling in the body, it means your soul is struggling. The answer that fixes your struggling body is not in the body. It's in transforming your soul. Somebody shout amen. This is why he says that do not be conformed to the superficial customs of this world. He says, do not be patterned after the superficial customs. He says, adapt new ideals. Do something about your mind. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. When you're reading the word, when you're reading that devotion, when you're listening to the word, when you're attending a fellowship, whatever you're doing, you may think you're passing time. You may think nothing is happening. But let me tell you something. You are educating your soul. You are filling your soul with something. Are you getting me? And the moment you become deliberate, the moment you become intentional, <laughs> there is no telling of what can happen with you. Praise the Lord. The challenge is that Christians are not intentional. Now let me teach about prayer. Tell your neighbor, he's teaching about prayer now. So the Bible says God is spirit. You remember that? And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. What is worship? Worship is your response to revelation. This is why giving is worship. Serving in church is worship. Whatever you do in response to revelation is worship. Revelation is epignosis interpreted to the mind. 
Do you understand that? If it's not epignosis interpreted to the mind, it's not revelation. Revelation has to be advanced. Shout amen. amen. So, epignosis interpreted to the mind for understanding to give application is what we call revelation are we together here are we together here so whatever you do to respond to revelation is worship so prayer can be worship i'm using the word can because sometimes it's you're not responding to revelation so singing is part of worship you're getting me it's not the entirety of worship are we together here so he said, God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Are we together? So if you are to pray, you must pray in spirit and in truth. If you are to give, you must give in spirit and in truth. Are we together here? What do I mean by that? If you are to pray, you present yourself according to what you are in the spirit. Not in the soul or in the body. That is what we call prayer. You have no business presenting to God what you are in the body. God is not body. God is not soul. God is spirit. So, what you are in the spirit, when you present yourself to God that way, to him you are praying in spirit and in truth. You are worshipping in spirit and in truth. Some songs are not worship. And please don't even take me into singing any of them. But who gets what I'm talking about? So, are we together? Now, a Christian comes. Father! I'm sick. Where are they? In the flesh. I'm sick. I'm struggling. Lord, change something about me. That's a prayer a non-believer should make. So why are you clapping now? Christians just like clapping. <laughs> You're following, eh? Okay, it's okay. <laughs> You know, we had to laugh a bit because it was intense. Anyway, but are you following? So, I'm sick. Very, very sick. So, they think if they emphasize the problem, the answer will come quicker. No. So, because we are praying carnally, we are worshiping carnally, we don't experience God's best. And when we don't experience God's best because we are lost in the network, we bring in gymnastics. Praise the Lord. We bring in what? So, because it's not working. So, somebody is praying a prayer like, but there's some things are only nice in Uganda, but I will interpret. Chusa tata, chusa, 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 chusa tata, chusa, chusa, chusa. Really, what is in their mind? Think about it. So they are trying to say, change Lord, change Lord, change Lord, change it Lord, change it Lord, change it Lord, change it Lord. You're getting me? Then it's as though. God is sitting like this. <laughs> you want a change and you're praying like that. So then they answer back and they're like, God, you're joking, I need a change. <laughs> so God is like, mm -mm, you've not cried enough. Then they also take it deeper. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. So we add in a few things there. You're getting me? <laughs> we add in a few things there. Because we are short of revelation, so we invent traditions. You're getting me? Because we are short of revelation. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. 
So we say, ah, maybe the reason your marriage is struggling, you did not sanctify the gifts that were given to you at the wedding. Do you know people? People can do things. So they put certain things in what? In your gifts. And you had to sprinkle the blood of Jesus. Okay, where is it written? Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Amen. Then we bring in a lot of things. But really, what we are missing is that we are praying in the flesh. Did you see that? Because you are presenting yourself to God according to what you are in the flesh. You see what I mean? Thereby, not being in faith. He says, we walk not by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Look at that. He says, we walk by faith, not by sight. This word sight is senses. We walk by faith. No, you either choose to be a man of senses or a man of the spirit. So he says, there is now therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not, who do not regulate their lives after the dictates of the flesh, but after the dictates of the spirit. You see, who don't make prayers according to what is in their bodies, according to what the senses have revealed, according to what they feel, according to what they think. No, but according to who they are in the spirit. Are we getting it? Are we getting it? Are we getting it? You are judged when you come from the flesh. You are justified when you come from the Spirit. <laughs> Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, many people don't get this art. Demons were supposed to be cast out of non-believers by believers. Gamba Amina. It was not supposed to be believers casting out demons in believers. Are you getting me? It was non-believers who were supposed to be delivered at our hand. Shout amen. amen. With us, we have no problem whatsoever. But you have no problem. Gamba Amina. Do you know why I say you have no problem? Because your spirit is alive. The other ones are dead. And because they are dead, they have no rescue. They have no help. But you, the Bible says, and you as he quickened, who was dead in your trespasses. Now, he has made you alive. That means you are alive unto God. And because you are alive, you have help. You have no problem with demons. Somebody shout amen. amen. When demons see you, they salute you and take off. Gamba Amina. Are you getting me? But then, carnality kicks in in prayer. And we have to come from here. Lord, I'm tired of this. Please change this. Change this for me. Change this for me. I'm tired of not sleeping. Lord, things strangle me. Don't you care while I'm perishing? Lord, Father, even the disciples said they woke you up. It is time to wake up Jesus right now. Zuxa Yesu, wake up Jesus. Jesus can't sleep, but you need to wake him up. Hallelujah. Yitatata. Zukuka. You know what I'm talking about? And you know, because you're sweating and you know, you feel like, mm, I'm getting somewhere. Then you talk like a, a pastor, I'm about to break through. I feel it. I feel that breakthrough is coming. Breakthrough to where? You know what I'm talking about? If it's not revelation, the way in, but you're not breaking through anything. Your breakthrough is when revelation comes to you. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout amen. But are we following here? So, stuff is happening here. You, you remember what's here? What's here? What's here? What's here? So, stuff is happening here. But here, stuff is done. Gamma mean. If it is concerning your health, you are already healed. If it's concerning your prosperity, you are already rich. If it's concerning your marriage, it is all well. Somebody shout amen. If it is concerning your children, he said the children of the righteous shall inherit this world. I'm not worried about my children. Are you getting me? You see? 
Now, because, now, so we've left praying in the flesh. Because you're praying in the spirit, don't say, they are yet four years, four months, and then cometh the harvest. You don't say, God is going to work for me on Tuesday when you're leaving today. You don't say, God is going to change for me on Thursday. Give me two weeks. Something will come through for me. Hey, Father, I'm expecting to see your hand in these two days. Muhammad, you know what I'm talking about. He says, don't say. Tell your neighbor, don't say. He said, don't say. They are yet four months and then come at the harvest. They are yet four months, then come at my marriage. There are yet two years, then cometh my this. There are yet two. Listen, God can do something that takes man a thousand years in one day. And God can do in one day something that can last a thousand years. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout amen. So that God that can perform say it, don't say. I will overcome. I will get married. One day I will be healed. One day this whole situation will be over. One day this will be like this. Don't say that he says. But he says, lift up your eyes. Did you get it? Lift up your eyes. See from here. Somebody shout amen. See from here. He says, lift up your eyes. That's what Colossians means when he says that if you be risen with Christ, set your mind on things above. Set your mind on things above. Somebody shout amen. It is impossible to keep yourself when your eyes are down here. He says if you live according to the flesh, you will surely die. If your prayer is of the things you see in the flesh, you will die. If your prayer for your children is of the things you see in their flesh, oh wait day. If your prayer for your marriage is of the things you see, oh wait day. He says we walk not by sight. We walk by faith. We don't walk according to the senses. We walk according to the spirit. So the spirit is above here. This is the place far from the reach of the enemy. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout amen. And the Bible is saying the senses are so slow to see what is being happen, what, what is being done here. What is happening here? The senses are too slow. So he says you need faith. Are you getting me? To regard as real fact this thing that is not revealed to the senses. But it's real. Somebody say hallelujah. So can I preach for a few minutes? Can I preach? What is here? This is the record that God has given us eternal life. And his life is in the Son, Jesus. Whosoever has the Son has the life. Here. I'm sick. I'm weak. I'm this. I have the life of God in me. What are you doing? I'm keeping myself. Rejected, unloved, accepted in the beloved. I have no parent. I have nobody. When your mother and father forsake you, I will pick you up. The Lord is your shepherd and he is your caretaker. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout amen. Tell your neighbor, look up. For God so loved the world and gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Give me the definition of perish. Please, give me the definition of perish. Can we get it? Should I get it? Is it coming? this. Perish. 
should not perish. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not be destroyed. I cannot be destroyed. Put out of the way entirely. I cannot be put out of the way entirely. I, I, can, I cannot be abolished. I cannot, I cannot be put to an end. I cannot be rendered useless. I cannot be killed. Eh? Oh, they said it has had divorced. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. Whosoever believes in the Son shall not be killed. Eh? Shall not be destroyed. Shall not be put to an end. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you start to preach to yourself. You start to preach to yourself. I am born again. I am a child of God. I'm anointed of God. I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I'm a seed of Abraham. I'm a joint heir with Christ. I cannot be poor. I cannot struggle. The Lord is the strength of my life. In the name of Jesus, I triumph in the works of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, I dwell in quietness from the fear of evil. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In the name of Jesus, I'm increasing every day. I'm multiplying every day. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I'm above and not beneath. I'm above and not beneath. I'm ahead and not a tail. In the name of Jesus, I'm anointed. I triumph every day. Thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph and makes manifest the server of his knowledge by us in every place. Hey, hey. Praise the Lord. Then they ask you, why are you talking like that? You tell them I'm keeping myself. I'm keeping myself. Body get in order because the life of God is in me. Body get in order because this is the temple of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I am well. All is well with me. I fear no evil. Hey. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Why are you scared? Why do you spend sleepless nights? If the devil ever wakes you up to worry, you also give him headache. <laughs> praise the Lord. You see, when he says that he led captivity captive, please understand. He bound bondage. He made disease sick. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. What is disturbing you? Oh, I'm depressed. Depressed? You? Depressed? You? You? Depressed? You? 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 I got the joy of the Lord in my spirit. I got the joy of the Lord in my spirit. I'm happy. I'm blessed. I have joy. I have joy. I have joy. Hallelujah. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? He's my light and my salvation. Somebody shout amen. He says, he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but he shall have the light of life. I have the light of life in my body. I have the light of life in my marriage. I have the light of life in my ministry. I have the light of life ever increasing glory and splendor. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What is the confidence that you will increase tomorrow? Because I'm looking up. What is the confidence that you will multiply tomorrow? My sight is up. My eyes are set on things above. Praise the Lord. Abraham struggled. God is telling him, you're going to have a child. He can't have a child. You're going to have a child. He can't have a child. When God got tired, he told him in chapter 15 of Genesis verse 5, he told him, look up to heaven. From here it's impossible. From here it is very hard. But open your eyes and look to heaven. And the Bible says, and Abraham believed and it was counted for him for righteousness. Somebody shout amen. You can't keep yourself when your eyes are here. One time I asked Apostle, I think in 2009, many years ago, I asked him, what's the secret 
I want to know. Please, you can sit. What's the secret? I want to know. What's the secret of living a consistent life? What must I do to always see the flow of the anointing? To always be fruitful in the spirit? What must I do? And then he told me. The word he told me came with too much weight. He looked at me in the eyes and said, Emma, look at me. If you are not going to cut your attention off the things that are seen, you will never amount to anything. He told me the power is in seeing the unseen. I told him, got you, sir. Hallelujah. And here we are preaching the gospel. Somebody shout, Amen. You're not going to die, except you're looking here. You're not going to fail. He said, he said, this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. What does faith do? It looks up here and considers that as the reality. Somebody shout amen. amen. You, you feel the anointing, don't you? You feel his power, don't you? You feel his glory, don't you? Hallelujah. No. That's how they fight. That's how you keep yourself. Hallelujah. Don't, the devils know what to do. You, your job is to look up. The devils know what to do. Praise the Lord. I said praise the Lord. Amen. So that's what the man of God means when he says, what if it increases? You also increase. I increase what? Looking up. You look some more. You look intently. You look deeply. <laughs> me, me, there are verses I read. That I've read for you John 3.16. Because I, I'm a believer, I cannot be destroyed. I cannot be killed. Boy. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Now, what Christians don't understand is that that is more effective. Than, Father, heal me. Father, change me. Father, work for me. Change. You're praying from here. That's why you're losing every day. You're losing. Praise the Lord. So, did you catch that? Did you catch that? One more thing and we are done. Is it okay? You caught that? Your eyes are here. Here, we have no disease. We have no... No, 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 no. Here, everything is in past tense. Everything you want God to do for you is in past tense. But then secondly... You can't keep yourself if you've not learned the art of dealing with fear. Fear is a spirit and it is very effective when it comes to hindering people's lives. So how do you deal with fear? He says perfect love casts out all fear. Let me explain. When you perfectly understand, when you understand the perfect love that God has for you. He says you're loosed from all your fears. For you to know and remind yourself that God loves me too much to fail, that God loves me too much to see this, is enough to deal with all your fears. Somebody shout amen. Amen. I've taken to papa issues and they say, uh, uh, you're more important to God than those people. Don't worry. It's well. It's well. It's well. It means he's opening my eyes to the love God has for me. Why? Why is your heart pumping? They are coming today. God loves you. Whether they come or they don't, God loves you. Did you get that? Oh, it is growing. It is growing. It was this size today, but now I feel it. God loves you. Come down. They said that today is the last day. God loves you. And all is well. Oh, I've not yet paid. God loves you. Your job 
is to go and dance. <laughs> Saying to yourself, God loves me too much to fail. He cannot suffer his right to see corruption. Somebody shout amen. amen. Why you're so worried is because you're not convinced of his love for you. Why you're so bothered is because you don't know how much he loves you. You hear me? So he said, don't fear them, little children. They've come against me. He says, don't fear them. You, 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 because you're beloved children. And because you're beloved, you've overcome them. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Somebody shout amen. So, and then he says, what shall we say to these things? Romans 8, 31. What shall we say to these things? You're getting me? To the things we've discussed. What shall we say to them? He says, if God be for us. Okay, let, 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 me, let me take it back. They are coming for me. If God be for you. They said, if God be for you. They, they, they concluded, if, but if God be for you. He says, who can be against you? The word who also has the connotation of what. So it is either who can be against you or what can be against you. Oh, it's big. God is for you. Relax. Oh, it's coming. God is for you. Somebody shout amen. Somebody shout amen. So he asks, if God be for us, who can be against us? Maybe you don't get it. Then he says, he that spared not his only begotten son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? He gave the hardest. Love moved him to give his only begotten son. Remember that the love God has for you is deeper than the love Jesus demonstrated for you at the cross. Do you know that? If you're a parent, you understand very well that it's easier for you to die than to see your child die. God loved you way deeper by giving his only begotten son. Watch him die for you. Because that was the only way he could convince you that I love you so much to watch you fail. And he did it anyway. Somebody shout amen. I said shout amen. So he said, if he spared not his only begotten son, but delivered him up for you, how won't he freely give you everything? I don't have rent. How won't he freely, you know, you get that? So you relax. Oh, I, I have a bad feeling. I dreamed. God is for me. It's well. Gamba mina. Then look at what he says. I love this one. Please read this with a legal mindset. I'm talking about lawyers. You're getting me? He says, who shall lay any charge, anything to the charge of God's elect? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? The answer should have been nobody. But you realize you wouldn't get it. So it's lawyers who understand what I'm talking about here. So the guy answers. The statement after is counterattacking the question. So it is not answered like it is God who justifies. No, 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 no. That's not how you read that. Let me read it for you again. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Don't you get that? That's how they read that line. Praise the Lord. Okay, let me help you understand it. Oh, the doctor said that, that it is God that justifies. It is God that validates the statement. Oh, they said, the police said, the doctor said, the man said, the gentleman said, the teacher said, it is God that justifies. Somebody shout amen. In other words, if he doesn't vindicate the statement, it's null and void. They spoke in vain. It's useless that they even took time to speak. That's what that means. Somebody shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. Did you see that? It is God that justifies. The Bible says the Lord in the midst of thee is mighty. I am. You never have to fear. So, if you feel scared, you say, I know who is with me. I know who is in me. I know who is around me. The Lord in the midst of me 
is mighty, then you dance. <laughs> Are you getting me? Then when you feel like the dance is not, you add that dance. You're getting me. The Lord in the midst of this mighty, you deal with this fear. You tell yourself the Lord is on my side. It is the Lord that if, they, if God has not said it, it cannot come to pass. You relax. Gamba mina. Gamba mina. I enjoy this portion of scripture. Ezekiel chapter 16. Look at that. I like this one. We go. He says, when I passed by thee, God is talking. God is talking. God, I'm not God is talking. He says, when I passed by thee, and saw thee polluted in thine own blood, I said unto thee, when thou wast in thy blood, leave. You were polluted. And because of his love, he said what? Live. As in be alive. Somebody say amen. And he repeats it for emphasis. And he says, I said unto thee when thou wast in thy blood, live. Let's go. I have caused thee. Because I said unto thee, live. I have caused thee to multiply. Somebody say higher. The Bible says, as the bird of the field. And thou hast increased and waxen great and thou art come to excellent ornaments. Thy breasts are fashioned and thy hair is grown whereas thou wast naked and bare. Uh -huh. when, now when I passed by thee I looked upon thee and behold thy time and behold thy time was the time of love. And I spread my skirt. You were naked, you remember? And, bear. and then he says, And I spread my skirt over thee, and covered thy nakedness. Yea, I swear unto thee, and entered into a covenant with thee, saith the Lord, that thou becamest mine. Oh, they said, they said, I belong to Jesus. I belong to God. But they said, I belong to God. God has laid ownership over you. That should settle you. Gamamina. That should calm you down. Somebody shout amen. amen. You cannot keep yourself when you're not convinced of how much you're loved. So every time things come. Before you fight, we attack, we break. <laughs> God loves me. You're getting me? I told Andy Kampala, God loves me. 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 Praise the Lord. And as you're doing that, the demons know what to do. Evil spirits know what to do. Fear knows what to do. When you say, I am the Lord's, I belong to God. God has placed a mark of possession on me. In the name of Jesus, I belong to God. <laughs> there is a way it beautifies you. There is a way it increases you. There is a way it defends you. There is a way it puts favor on you. There is... Come on, somebody. Somebody shout amen. Okay, listen. If a woman can get married to a man, mortal man, and her life changes. What about you who is married to God? Get up on your feet and we pray. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now I can boldly speak as the apostle Peter. And say if you do these things. You will never fall. Somebody shout amen. I said shout amen. I said shout amen. So that's how you keep yourself. What have they said? It doesn't matter. Truly one, lift up your eyes. Tell your neighbor, lift up your eyes. Would you take off a few minutes and lift up your eyes right now? Let me hear you. I speak to you that you're strong 
the Lord is the strength of your life. You cannot fail. You are growing stronger. You're increasing greatly. I speak to you. I speak to your soul. All is well with you. God has you covered. Build faith in yourself. Look at what you are before God. You are who he says you are. Jara Gorobo Satalaba. The power to change the things you see comes from focusing on the things above. That disease is nothing. That report is nothing. That word is nothing. All those things are nothing. Allow the voice of God to triumph in your soul. In the name of Jesus Christ. You have a heritage with God. You are born of God. You are a seed of God. You are a seed of greatness. Shara Godorobo Zineba. And as you speak those things, you are preserving yourself. You are keeping yourself from corruption. You are keeping yourself from the torment of Satan. You are inaccessible, far from the reach of trouble. Ragodobo Silaba Sharagodo Robo Silebo Marabakoto Robo Zarabaye Sabadelebo Kotalaba Ayarando Robo Sileba God has blessed you immensely. God has increased you immensely. Open your eyes and see. All is well with you. Open your eyes and see. Your deliverance came long ago. Open your eyes and see. You are a success in the name of Jesus. You are a blessed man and woman in the name of Jesus. God's power is operating on you in the name of Jesus. His glory is radiating on your life in the name of Jesus Christ. You are blessed in everything that you do. You are blessed in everything that you say. You are blessed everywhere you go. God's hand is on you. Your testimony is firm. Radeba kosa talaba. Jara mandorobo zilebaba. If your body is sick, the life of God in your spirit goes through your body right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Radobo setelelebaka. You cannot be confused. You cannot walk in fear. Ramamba Soka Ramamba Koti Soka Talabakaya Rakodo Robo Sileba Sababakate Oh Lord we give you praise Lord we give you praise Lord we give you praise Your life is shining Your life is beautiful The Lord beautifies your life you will fulfill God's will for your life. You are walking in the perfect will of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you praise. Come on, somebody glorify God. Glorify God. Glorify God. All is well with you. All is well with you. It is already done. It is already done. It is already done. Hallelujah. Praise God. Tell your neighbor it's already done. So this is the practice. Don't stop here. When you go back home, do the same thing. You hear me? All is well. Hallelujah. Right now, I would like to give an opportunity for those that have not yet met Jesus Christ, their Lord, to come forth and receive him in their lives. Yes, if you're there and you're not yet born again, 
I welcome you. I give you this opportunity to come and receive Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life. lives to Christ. Are they still coming? If you're near somebody coming, please put up your hand. Okay, here they are. Praise the Lord. Uh, I would like one of the men of God to go and help those people there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, for those of you that are here, somebody else is coming. Somebody's coming? Yes, hurry up. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you for coming. Yes, uh, of course, we are all aware that we have kids that come from the streets to have service with us. And uh, the man of God, Pastor Brian, is taking care of that. Praise the Lord. Papa always encourages us to make sure that we stand with that ministry, support them with everything that we can. Amen. To change their lives, to give them a chance to. Somebody say amen. So, Pastor Brian, as you're leading those ones, let me lead these ones. So please, I would like you to say, Lord Jesus. All of you, please speak. Lord Jesus, today I believe that you died for my sins and you rose again for my justification. I am born again. I'm a child of God. My life belongs to you. Change me, use me. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for these ones. The scriptures declare that you're able to keep that which we have committed unto you. Lord, we commit these ones unto you. We commit their lives to you. We commit their destiny to you. We commit everything pertaining them to you in the name of Jesus. Keep them, undergird them, mature them, teach them, train them, and finally use them greatly in this life. And Lord, I ask you that preserve them, walk with them, help them know you every day of their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Somebody say amen. Now, I would like you to please follow that gentleman. We need to take your names and numbers because we want to follow you through and make sure that 
we help you understand what it means to be born again and so on and so forth. Hallelujah. And for the rest of you, I would like to let you know that all is well with you. You're going to have a very beautiful week. This year is beautiful for you. God's blessing is upon your life. His hand is on you. His voice speaks for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you as we depart. This broadcast was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information about the great work of God, visit us on the web at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app today and enjoy sermons, daily devotionals, and timely updates. The Fenero app, available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. You may also email us at info at fenero.org. Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Fenero, make manners.